from the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President, with Janelle Carter. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the President, a weekly news magazine which provides you with an in-depth look at the policies, programs and work of the President of Ghana and his quest to realize the good life for all Guyanese. I'm your host, Janelle Carter. In the news this week, President Bridges says Ghana will not offer the adversary any corridor or any passage. Education has a transformative role to play in national development and the head of state joins a New Amsterdam Tongue Day celebration. Protection and defense of Guyana's boundaries is a top priority for the current administration. With forces from the east and the west taking contemptible claims on the birthright of Guyanese citizens, Guyana must focus on diplomacy as the first line of defense. However, with the announcement of the total defense policy by President Granger, there is a new emphasis on the strengthening of the Guyana Defense Force. On October 26, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Brigadier David Granger, traveled to the Cayuni mazaruni area in Region 7, where ranks of the Guyana Defense Force were in the final phase of Exercise Green Heart, a tactical training exercise. The head of state was accompanied by Vice President and Public Security Minister Kamraj Ramjatan. The constitution of our country requires the GDF to defend our, natural, our national independence. It requires the GDF to preserve the country's sovereignty and integrity. It requires the GDF to provide for the security of citizens against any armed aggression. And this exercise today does exactly what the constitution of the Cooperative Republic of Ghana requires the GDF to do. The president said that GDF has demonstrated that after four to five years of training, they are a jungle force to be reckoned with. However, under the recently announced total defense policy, more intense specialized training is catered for. The long-term objective of this policy is to ensure that Ghana will be able to depend on defense forces, which will ensure the safety of citizens and the security of the country. People must know that when they come into Guyana to invest, they'll be coming into a safe environment that is protected by one of the best defense forces in the Caribbean, the GDF. If they're coming to Aurora in our gold fields, if they're coming to explore our petroleum, they must know that this country is committed to protecting their investment. And no other country must intimidate them or threaten them. So what you have done here today, GDF, is an example to show our foreign direct investments that their investments are safe and that Guyana will use every fiber of its state system, of its defense forces, to protect their investment. So it's a good example. It's also an example of unison, that the defense force can work together with the police force, that the defense force can work together with the Regional Democratic Council, and inside defense force, that the infantry could cooperate with the artillery that the ground forces could cooperate with the Air Force and the Coast Guard, that the logistics and communication um, all work together. So this exercise is a demonstration of our ability to bring all of the arms together. Even as Ghana works to build up its own defense capacity and conducts diplomatic engagements with regional and international bodies on the border threats, President Granger noted that our country wants peace but not at the expense of territorial integrity. We cannot sell out. We cannot give way. We cannot offer the adversary any card or any passage. We have an obligation to hand over to our children and grandchildren the country that we inherited from our parents and grandparents. Earlier this week, President Granger attended the 70th anniversary of the United Nations, where he stated that now more than ever, Ghana needs the support of the UN with threats from Venezuela and Suriname to its territorial integrity and sovereignty. The UN Charter 
guarantees small states' protection and justice against rogue states. The Cooperative Republic of Guyana, a small state, has seen foreign investors intimidated. It has seen foreign petroleum exploration terminated by gunboats from the east, gunboats from the west. And even now, it is enduring the painful illegal occupation of its territory. Guyana seeks the peace that only international organization could promise. It seeks the collective security measures that only the United Nations could provide. Guyana is eternally grateful to the United Nations. Guyana is confident and we iterate our complete commitment to the aims and purposes of the United Nations Charter. Exercise Greenheart was also meant to identify deficiencies that may exist in the force and as such there will be an assessment of this performance which will ensure that improvements are made as the army continues its cycle of annual exercises. It was a timely, defensive, non-aggressive operation to test and perfect the force's defense mechanisms. We have deployed a substantial component of the Guyana Defense Force which I will refer to as the Task Force. So we deploy the task force into the Pataro Bartica area, basically to conduct a jungle exercise. And during this exercise, they were um, exercising uh, patrolling, in um, harboring, right, setting up defensive positions in the jungle, um, ambush and anti-ambush drills, and also attacking of uh, enemy base camps and so on. and access to education is seen as one of the bugbears that must be corrected to place students in the hinterland and other outlying areas on a level playing field with their peers on the coast. President Granger believes that a solid educational foundation will ensure that Guyana is ready to meet the developmental challenges. However, this cannot be accomplished if academic excellence is limited to only the top 1%. Speaking at the recently held National Education Awards ceremony organized by the Ministry of Education to reward the top academic achievers for 2015, President Granger described the national disparities that his administration will have to address. We must avert the danger of children being separated along lines of gender, along lines of social class, or along lines of geographical location. To address these problems, the government is looking at reshaping the existing education policies to ensure inclusivity and equity. It also plans to invest heavily in the sector within the next 15 years to enhance infrastructure and train and equip teachers to deliver education that is of a high standard. These policies, every child in secondary school, every teacher being university educated, every secondary school being well equipped, these policies must be the foundation upon which we will fashion our education system, a system that will produce citizens of quality, citizens who possess the knowledge, skills, and attitudes, not only to gain gainful employment, but also to be competitive in the global marketplace. Awards were given out to this year's top students at the National Grade 6 Assessment, CSEC and CAPE exams, as well as students who performed outstandingly at the various technical institutes, the Carnegie Home of Economics and the Sarapota College of Education. I have said on numerous occasions that while I, of course, commend entirely your efforts in terms of academic achievement, and today we are faced with people who have excelled in the examinations. I am very, very happy to congratulate you, but urge you to believe 
that you are at the beginning of the road. This is the 19th year that the Ministry of Education has been hosting this event. With an education and youth-centered approach to development, it is incumbent that government, civil society bodies, NGOs, churches, schools, and communities as a whole to invest in this particular demographic so that they are adequately prepared to take the country forward. This week, over 600 youths were recognized for their hard work under the President's Youth Award Republic of Guyana PYARG program. 48 of them received gold awards, 146 silver, and 408 bronze awards. Guyana is on the precipice of greatness, and the President Youth Award offers a golden opportunity for each and every one of us to lend a helping hand in that great movement of development. Delivering the feature address, President David Granger said that a principal objective of his government is to ensure that youths are provided with every opportunity of becoming gainfully employed. It is axiomatic that the future belongs to young people. What this means is that the youth will inherit the earth. It is for the youth to grasp the opportunities afforded by this beautiful, wonderful country, the Republic of Guyana. This award scheme is meant to prepare you for the future. Youth development must equip young people with the right education, the right attitudes, the right values, if they are to go out into the world and to become productive and useful citizens. The PYARG initiative began in 1998 with the aim of providing young people with the opportunities for personal development, wider exposure to their country, and the chance to meet and interact with other young people from other parts of the country while committing to community service. The program gives persons an opportunity whereby they can complete an award or a level of an award at bronze, which requires six months, silver, 12 months, and gold. 18 months. Within those three levels, there are four sections we refer to as community service, where we're giving young people to give back meaningful service to their community and to their country as a whole, so we can all work together to enhance nation building. We look at physical recreation, teaching them a discipline, so that whatever we do, we must be fit, physically fit, so we can be able to take on the world of challenge ahead of us. Then we look at our skills, where we're empowering young people with the skills that they can take them through life. I'm a gold awardee of the PYRG program. It's an amazing program. Youths learning different skills and life tasks. It's, it's just amazing. It was, it was exciting. Today, the PYARG has offered approximately 17,000 youths ages 14 to 24 with the opportunity to be involved in a number of activities ranging from skills training, community service, and physical training, all of which serve to enrich and empower them while at the same time benefit communities. It is clear increasingly, however, that while we may be graduating thousands of persons every year in various programs and from our schools, Many have not been able to find satisfactory employment. PYARG's focus, therefore, has to be on the type of education that prepares young people for employment. Most particularly, youths must be exposed more intensively to information technology and entrepreneurship to enable them when they graduate the start of their own businesses and become independent. The job market is increasingly influenced by technology, especially information technology. The PYARG promotes voluntarism and positive character building traits that are important for youths to inculcate in order for them to take on leadership roles. The same message of youth center development was taken to Barbies when the president visited the county 
On October 25th, while outlining his government's vision for development, he reiterated that education is the gateway to realizing the good life. Our young people deserve quality education, and particularly those who live in rural and hinterland areas must not feel that they have to migrate to the urban centers, must not feel that they have to go to Nikeri or, or go to Venezuela or Brazil in order to have a good life. Right here in East Pabis, currently, you could have that good life. The president stated that there are five core values that will make youths more rounded. He said opportunities alone will not be sufficient for young people to succeed in achieving their goals. These five core values include discipline, duty, responsibility, integrity, and identity. We can't always look to government for jobs. You can create many of those jobs right here in this region. We also want to see young people taking greater opportunities in recreation and sport, and that's why I'm so glad to be here today to see the good work that this club has been doing. There must be more clubs like this throughout the region and throughout the country. Meanwhile, at another function where the St. Francis community developers celebrated their 29th anniversary, the role which communities, non-governmental, and civil society organizations play in bridging governance gap was brought to the fore. Ghana needs effective community and civil society organizations since they give a voice to the ordinary citizens. This year, New Amsterdam is celebrating 124 years of being a town, making it the oldest town in the country with a rich history. As citizens celebrate their town's achievement, they are called upon by the head of state to adopt a stronger sense of entrepreneurship to develop so that the county can emerge as the commercial capital of a booming economy. New Amsterdam is located about five miles from the mouth of the Burbies River on its eastern bank and is situated at the confluence of the Burbies and Kanji Rivers. With such a strategic location, President of Ghana, His Excellency Brigadier David Granger says this town is better placed than any other region for commerce, as he urged them to use the natural advantage to itself, a commercially advanced region. New Amsterdam in its early days was always regarded as a splendid town. It had ornate buildings. Unfortunately, one of the landmarks was pulled down only within recent memory, the hospital building. But we're not here to mourn what has passed. We're here to plan for the future. And Town Week is an opportunity for us to look to the future. It is an opportunity to celebrate the lives of the men and women who have come out of this town. Some of the finest doctors, some of the finest educators and lawyers and musicians and businessmen, professionals, parliamentarians. President Granger outlined some guidelines which citizens should take into consideration as they venture into a new era pointing to the fact that the region has the capacity to become a strong and legitimate economy. So let us begin tonight to lay a foundation for revitalization of this community. We want New Amsterdam to be a well laid out, a well drained, a well zoned town. It has a commercial sector it must have an efficient governmental sector. It must have effective regional and municipal centers capable of delivering public services to the citizens of the entire region. As you know, Region 6 is a frontline region. Only two Caribbean countries touch each other, Guyana and Suriname. The residents were reminded that for revitalization to take place, character which has diminished over the years must be restored. The importance of the tongue going green was also underscored. 
This would entail a sound solid waste plan, planting of trees, stricter enforcement against littering, and better overall management of the environment. Equally important, too, is for the region to maintain and sustain a high level of orderliness, as the president emphasized the importance of safety if the region is to attract investors. These are some areas in which the new administration will be working with stakeholders in the region in a move to bring about the much-needed changes. New Amsterdam must be a services town. A services town. It must not only be safe, it must only be a business town and a green town, but it must be a services town. You know, over and over again, people complain about the lack of services. The private sector commission just complained, and I agree with them. But let's have a plan. There's no reason why all these licenses and passports should not be issued in this region. You think anybody living in California got to go to Washington, D.C. to get a passport? Huh? You think somebody living in Ohio got to go to New York or Washington to get a license? We can never develop the country like that. You have to have these services right here. That is the purpose of regionalism. With these policies in mind and with all stakeholders on board, the administration over the next five years will be working towards transforming not only New Amsterdam, but every other tongue in the region. This year, the tongue is celebrating its 124th anniversary under the theme enhancing social and economic development through national unity. Thank you for staying with us. What does the president do all week? Let's take a look inside his diary. On Sunday, October 25th, President of Ghana, His Excellency Brigadier David Granger, spent the day in Burbies, Region 6, where he held a number of engagements. As was promised, the head of state paid a visit to Sarah Shif Basad and her mother, Lalita Badesi, who are currently staying with relatives at East Kanji Burbies following a fire which destroyed their home last week. 15-year-old Sarah Shif Basad, who lost her school-based assessment, School books, uniforms, and other personal effects during the fire was presented with a bicycle to help her to get to school. Additionally, the government, through the regional administration, will pay the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate examination fees for the Barbies High School fifth form student. Also, civil society stepped up to aid the government in its quest to ensure that every school-aged child is able to access quality education. One of the most recent gestures saw Food for the Poor Ghana Incorporated handing over eight bicycles to students from the East Bank of Babis. The President, His Excellency Brigadier Granger and Chief Executive Officer of Food for the Poor Ghana Incorporated, Mr. Kent Vincent, made the presentation at a ceremony which was held on Sunday, October 25th at the Rose Hall East Burbies Quarantine Region. Later on that day, the President paid an impromptu visit to the Firish Health Center, where he met with a team of 16 doctors from the United States of America who are part of a medical mission to Ghana. The medical mission is an annual event which caters to the needs of villagers at Firish and other surrounding communities. The team provides free consultations, diagnostic checks, and treatment for a variety of ailments. When required surgeries are performed by surgical team members at the New Amsterdam Hospital. The medical mission was lauded by President Granger for their initiative, hard work, and service to the people of East Barbies Quarantine. The president also joined with the nursing fraternity at a dinner and award ceremony to celebrate the 46th anniversary since the nursing assistance program became officially recognized. And on October 29, he met with two officials from the Islamic Development Bank, an international financial organization located in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. That brings us to the end of this week with the President. Thank you for joining us. For a regular update on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website www.motp.gov.gy. Like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. I'm Janelle Carter. Do have a safe and productive week ahead. Goodbye for now.